page four, Allemande. It's a very common type of piece of music back in this time. If you look at the years when the composer was living a long time ago, uh -huh. common time or 4-4 four, four time. There's one sharp in the key signature where in the key of G major all the F's are going to be sharped. So let's just cover the fingering and the notes and the rhythms first, starting with the right hand. And I'm just going to connect everything as best I can for now. So it's 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and then you, you half notes with second finger and going on we're just going to do thumb. You're going to go here. So just Major five, you have a C sharp, so it's one. Just the third finger, just come up. And that sharp, by the way, is good for the rest of the major. So both of those C's in that major are sharped. And when you repeat, you got to reach down with the thumb, and and you do it again. When you go on. Then you're going to measure seven, you're going to use fifth finger for the D here. Again, you just lift up and move. Here. Then measure nine, one and two and. One and two. Fourth finger, scrunch up a little bit. Cross over. See, the whole idea of doing this is we didn't put a thumb on a black key. Tip, a lot of times we don't because the thumb is a short finger and it makes your hand go way up in here so sometimes we adjust the fingering so we don't have to use the thumb we do use it quite a bit on black keys but if there's a possibility of something else here you go so in measure nine again because we could have done this very easily just staying with three here but by using four that avoids that here four you have second finger on that. Then I measure 10, you cross over. You don't even have to cross over. Go back to measure 9 here. We use fourth finger. Well, I could use fourth finger again here. And then I don't have to cross over. However, it's good practice to cross over. Let's cross over. Then in the last, you use thumb. Again, it's a 1 5 at the end. It's a B and a G. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, if you repeat that, you go back to measure 7 to the reverse repeat sign. You're just going to lift up and move. Little finger again. That's fine. Left hand. Starting here. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, isn't this fun? 1, 2, 3. the F sharps. Let's go down to measure seven. You're here. Reach, just reach up with the thumb. You're not moving the hand, just the thumb. And you only have the thumb up there long enough to play the note. That's it. And then it's, it can come back where it was. So again, measure seven. One, two, three, four. the two D's, it's a five and a one. That's fine, just we do that a lot, it happens. And at the end, that is a G and a D. Put the hands together. Now the different fingers are happening at different times, so watch out here. One and two and three and sense to you? Did that sound right? Well, it sounded right to this guy way back 100 years ago. Doesn't sound right to me, but that's what's written. Okay. Let's go on to major 7. You're here. Remember, little finger. last two beats, the two quarter notes, they have the two, and then both hands are changing. You're going to thumb and thumb. There. And then. And then if you 
repeat, you gotta, both hands have to move here. That's hard. When you have to move both hands at the same time, like that, that can be hard. Now, more advanced music, we have different ways of helping us prevent having to do that. I'm guessing that we need the practice. So just know where you're at. You're here at the end. Know where you want to go and which fingers. That's a little finger in the right hand. It's, it's index finger in the left. So you're going to go from here to here. Just practice that move over and over and over. Good practice. It doesn't need to be a real fast jerky motion. Try, no, just lift up and move. Just to so forth. And when you have a handle on all that mess, then we can add in these slurs. Just in the right hand, lift up between the slurs. So a lot of times you have to because it's a repeated note or you're whatever, you're changing hand position or something. In the left hand, there's different ways of interpreting this left hand. There's nothing marked. I'm going to go ahead and suggest just play it connected for now. So it's here. It's the right hand lift up. Don't, not the left. See? I'm just lifting up in one hand. And again, just the right hand, not the left. So just lift up in the right hand. I could make this a lot more difficult for you, but I think Considering the notes we're playing, that's enough. Just just do that. Lift up in the right hand on these slurs. Now dynamic wise, well a lot of times in this kind of music, dynamics is more up to you. These dynamics put in, these weren't written in by the composer. They, these are the editors or somebody else's suggestions. So all they give you is a moderately loud. Because this is kind of a happy alamon. So just not loud, just on the loud side of the middle somewhere, whatever, and that's the right hand. But you're not going to stay exactly at that level. You get to know it and you're feeling it and you'll start experimenting with it. Now if you can play the left hand softer then do that. Keep the left soft while you're doing louder with the, you're just putting more weight in the right hand than the left. Keep the left hand light if you can takes time and practice to learn to do that, but I, I'm asking you to keep working on it because in time you will get it, but you got to work on it to do it. So, uh, so forth, just, just sits a melody. Speed wise, Somewhere in the middle, not fast or slow, whatever. It has to be accurate. It's up to, I think about how fast I was playing it is fine. I wouldn't go any faster than that. things because you see the repeat sign at the end of the second line means you go back to the beginning and play that part again and then the last two lines are surrounded by repeat signs so you're going to play them twice so when we repeat things we try to find something we can change we don't want to play it twice exactly the same way what's the point point? and there are different times sometimes you can change your slurs sometimes you can change the dynamics Sometimes there's other little things that we can change I'll talk about later. Here, I'm suggesting when you repeat these, come down and play it the second time, maybe in a moderately soft range. So at the beginning, you're going to start out moderately loud. But then after you repeat it, just play it a little softer. And then 
the same thing on measure seven. First time, go up and play it moderately loud. And then when you repeat it, come down and play it softer. Change something, and so the dynamics is what I'm suggesting we change here. I'd like to play this with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. Not going to do any dynamics. So I'll give us four counts, and we will do the repeats in the whole bit. One, two, ready, and go, and. Mm -hmm. 